When we started the Circuit Bread channel, I very explicitly said that I wasn't going to do any math tutorials when we were talking about it because I, as I've been mocked on the internet by some, I am not great at math. It's not my strength. I'm, I'm okay at it. I'm comfortable with it. I enjoy it, but I make dumb mistakes and I am very embarrassed to do math on camera. So I am breaking that rule because we are talking about the way that you deal with the math that often comes from your circuits one problems. So a lot of the times when you solve for a circuit, your, your equations end up in a somewhat um, similar form. They are basically the same in their component parts, but then you just have different values and different levels of complexity. So I wanted to talk about how I have found the, for me, the two best ways of doing basically circuit math and kind of going through the steps and showing one, the what I find to be the much harder yet uh, much more common way of doing things because it's something that you can do without a calculator. And then also I want to show you the way to do it when you have access to tools like um, our linear equations calculator on the circuitbread.com website. So with that, I set this example up, which I got to admit, gave me a greater appreciation for people that write textbooks and teachers that come up with example problems because I struggle coming up with good problems that aren't just the same things over and over again. So I wanted to create this circuit and I just want to state that if you are solving for I in any of this, it's pretty obvious. So don't, don't think about it too deeply like the actual circuit itself. We're more focused on the math. But in this case, I have basically a simple circuit with 10 volts right here. And then I have a resistor, 100 ohms, 200 ohms, 300 ohms, 400 ohms. And that's R1, R2, R3, R4. And that's I1 going through that I2, I3, I4. Just again, for me, it makes sense to make the I's match the R's. So R1 has got the current I1 going through it if possible. And then finally, I've identified this node as V1 and this node as V2. And then I just wrote those out because I got a little bit tiny and I'm not sure how well you can see it. And then going from there, I said using KCL, V1, I have I1 minus I2 minus I3 equals zero because I1 is going in, I2 is leaving, I3 is leaving. And then on V2, I have I2 plus I3 minus I4 equals zero right there. And if I'm going too fast, that probably means you just need to spend a little bit more time with KCL. Um, but again, all I'm doing here is identifying the currents in and out of um, those two nodes that I called V1 and V2. And I probably should have called N1 and N2. So sorry about that. So now, using KCL, we continue on. And again, this is all just setting up for the math. So give me a minute. I1, we've established that that is 10 minus V1 over R1. I2 is the same thing, uh, V1 minus V2 over R2, and so on. So I've written out what I1, I2, I3, I4 are, and then I've replaced those down here. So V1 equals 10 minus V1 over 100, minus V1 minus V2 over 200, minus I3, which is V1 minus V2 over 300 equals zero. So all of that setup was just to get to, it's just I wanted to give you some context, but that's just to get to these two equations. So now we have two unknowns and two equations. So now I'm going to take it down a notch, slow it down. <sighs> okay. So we have two equations and two unknowns. Now, this is where I talked about this is a very similar setup you see in circuits and the complexity goes up because sometimes you get three equations and three unknowns, four equations and four unknowns. Um, I've never seen above four, frankly, but I'm sure you can. And at, even at four, it just turns into a huge mess. So if you have four, bless you. Good luck. But right now, we'd like to focus on these two equations and focus on first the substitution method of solving for V1 and V2 in these. And then we will go through the, um, the method of using a matrix calculator to solve for it and kind of go over the pros and cons of the two and also um, just exactly how you do it. So let us take this first equation and for substitution, we take this first equation and we get it. So basically we get either V1 or V2, depending on what we wanna do, over to the same side. So using this first one, let's start by simplifying this. I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 100. So I'm now going to have 10 minus V1 minus V1 over 2 plus V2 
over 2 minus v1 over 3 plus v2 over 3 equals 0. And this is, this is where I make those math mistakes. The calculus, whatever, uh, the complex algebra, whatever. It's me accidentally putting pluses where I shouldn't and minuses where I shouldn't. That's my weakness. And if that's your weakness, take your time. Learn to take your time so you don't be like me. Okay, and then we can take this and we can simplify this so that we have all the V1s and all the V2s together. So I'm basically going to just do 10. That's going to come out to be plus, oh, common denominator. What is that? 5 V2 over 6. Um, and then let's move the V1 over to the other side to make that positive. And that is going to be, so V1, uh, doo -doo -doo, another common denominator. It's going to be 6 again, so I've got 11 V1 over 6. And this is kind of the fun thing about randomly throwing in numbers. You sometimes get some crazy math where your numbers are getting out of control. Okay, and then from here, I'm just going to multiply both sides by 6 elevenths to get that to be V1 all by itself. So that's just going to be 6 over 11 times 10 plus 5 V2 over 6 equals V1. Okay, so again, stick with me. This is the first step with substitution. So what we have done here now is we've taken that first equation and we have pulled out where uh, pulled out everything so we just have everything equals one variable now we keep this in our minds we kind of let's say hey we're going to need you in just a second and let's go to a, another piece of paper where we will do the second equation okay so this is the second equation again this is what we got right here and so now we're basically going to do the same simplification on this second equation that we did on the first one. So I'm going to multiply everything by 200. So you get v1 minus v2 plus 2v1 over 3 minus 2v2 over 3, then minus v2 over 2 equals 0. <sighs> okay, and then we now need to, well, I mean, we could even at this point do the substitution, but it would be more complicated. I, and just the, the whole point of this is now that we know what V1 equals, we can take V1 and stick it in here. And then now we only have V2 because if we take this and stick it in there, we no longer have V1 and all it is is this and then it all comes out. But Putting this in every place that we see V1 here, which in this case is actually only twice, it's more complicated than it needs to be. So let's simplify this before we do that replacement. So let's see, V1 minus, oh, V1 plus 2 thirds V1 is going to give us 5 thirds V1. Mm -hmm. 5 V1 over 3. Um, and then let's throw V2 onto the other side just for the fun of it. And let's see, so it's V2, two thirds, and then one half. And that is going to give us 13 halves. V2, did I do that right? Nope, six, six. I skipped a step in my brain. And again, I don't know how many times I have to say this. Don't be me, be good at math. Okay, so now to further simplify this, multiply both sides by 3. So now we just have 5v1 equals 13v2 over 2. Well, I mean, we can even simplify that farther and just get v1 equals 13v2 over 10. Okay, so now we take this and we replace, oops, replace this v1 with that, and we have... So let's see, 6 over 11 times 10 plus 5v2 over 6 equals 13v2 over 10. Okay, 
I think right now, if you're still with me, congratulations, you're probably saying, okay, this is getting complicated. I, I feel like we've got multiple pieces of paper here. Everything's kind of going out of cra uh, going crazy. And that's one of the challenges with this method. You see, I haven't ha had to use a calculator yet. I, I think I'm going to switch over to decimal pretty quick because the, des uh, the fractions are going to get crazy. But this is, this is how come this version, this method is, is a bit of a struggle is because there's just a lot of simple math that you can get messed up. So be very careful, take your time, because if you're on a test, you're most likely gonna have to do the math like this. And again, good luck if that's the case. But let's, let's take this and we'll just turn that into 60 elevenths plus, okay, how does that, 30, 60, 30, 30 over 66 V2. Okay, I'm just gonna get this into decimal really quick. So let me put this, uh, let's get this into decimal. Um, oh man, once this all simplifies out, if I multiply both sides by 10 and divide by 13, I basically get, this turns into 4.2 plus, oh, 0.35 V2 equals V2, which then gives us 4.2 equals 0.65 V2, which then gives us 6.46 equals V2. Okay, that was it. Now that we know what V2 is, we can go back and to the original equation and plug that number in and we'll be able to solve for V1. But even with me writing big on these, that was, that was a bit cumbersome. Um, again, very simple math, but cumbersome. And this is with only two equations and two unknowns. So that is a substitution method. That is where you solve for one in, in uh, respect to the other one, and then go back, substitute it, and then you only have one equation, and you actually can figure out what, what you need to do. Now, that... This is a process that it's really good to practice it. It's good to know because this helps kind of give a nuts and bolts feel for what's going on. But if you're ever in a situation where you have access to a computer or have access to tools, yet not necessarily to a SPICE program, I would highly recommend doing this second method, which basically just uses linear algebra. So let me see. Let's go. Now we're on to the second method. So first method, substitution. That was exciting. I never want to do that again. So, second method, you basically can just look at the first method and um, not go quite as far before punching it into the calculator. Okay, so the second method, the, the way you do it is you basically just have to match the, the V1 and the V2 and then the actual number that you have and put it into a matrix properly. So, what I mean by that is, let's go back, this is solving for, uh, this was the first equation that we had, and we can look right here. And we can take that and move it around a little bit. So for the matrix calculation, we want, again, it makes sense. And it doesn't matter as long as you are consistent, but it makes sense to put this as negative 11v1 over 6 plus 5v2 over 6 equals negative 10. So that is just negative 11, point, 11 over 6 times V1 plus 5, 6 times V2, and then that is equal to negative 10. So that's, that's important to note because now we are going to the second one, and we are our second equation, which we figured out. Um, we just can go and look right here making sure that this is still visible, we can take this and put it up here and we can say 5v1 over 3 minus 13v2 over 6 equals 0. And now we have done all of the manual math that we need because we have v1, v1, v2, v2, and then our number right there. So now we actually jump to our matrix calculator which you're gonna see, this is super fast. We are almost done. Hallelujah. 
So now we are on this linear equations calculator. And again, if you had more, um, more unknowns and more equations, you can just go in and change it. Uh, again, if you get over five, good luck. Uh, but in this case, for A, we will look and see, oh, it's 11, negative 11 divided by 6. Then we have 5 divided by 6. Then we've got negative 10. And then this one, we've got 5 thirds. And then negative 13 over 6. And then 0. And there we go. 6.451, 6.46, so obviously I made some sort of rounding error doing all of this. Uh, that's not too surprising, but instead of having to do all of these calculations and putting in the substitution and basically just having a heck of a time, I was able to get it to this point, which was really quite straightforward, and then put it into the calculator and have it do it for me. And not only is it faster, it's less likely to have any mistakes because you aren't doing as much manual math. And again, if you're a mathematician and this stuff is easy for you, why are you watching this video? Uh, I don't know. But if you're like me and math is, you know, okay, but not the best thing in the world for you, this is very helpful. Now, the reason we went over the substitution is again, in most classes, your teacher's going to make you do it by hand. And maybe you'll have like a TI-84 or a TI-83. If you're lucky, maybe a TI-89, which you can do with the matrix calculation on a TI-89. It's just a little bit more complicated. I um, mean, I'm not going to get into that. But um, these are the two methods, the, the painful yet good to learn and good to know for school, and then the not quite so painful faster to do uh, method if you just need to figure something out really quick. Now, on both of these, it, it goes back to what I think I, I, at least I hope I always stress on any of this is having an intuitive feel. As you're looking at this, um, both of these, do these make sense? Uh, is it makes sense that the first voltage here, uh, V1 is a higher voltage than here, yes. Does it make sense that it, they're both less than 10, yes. Does it make sense that this is actually still over half of the total voltage, yes, because there's 400 ohms there, so to have the same current going through here as going through all of these, you need a pretty high voltage here. So all of this stuff makes sense. No matter what tool you are using, it is super important that you understand intuitively what's going on and what makes sense. Because if you've gotten V1 is 13 volts and V2 is negative 73, that should send a red flag. Like, that's not at all what it should be. But that's it. Okay. That was, um, I, I fear, maybe why I should never do math tutorials. That was kind of painful. Painful for me. Hopefully it wasn't painful for you. I really hope that helped you out. I really hope that lays a foundation for you to understand how you can do um, all of the circuits math using both substitution and, if you have the ability, doing it on the linear equations calculator. If you have any questions, please drop it in the comments below on YouTube, go to circuitbread.com, put it there. Uh, you can go to our new Discord channel, and hope, I don't know when you see this, maybe it won't be a new Discord channel by then, and ask any questions to see if we can help clarify anything that I wasn't as clear as I'd like to be in this video. If this was useful and this was helpful, give it a like, subscribe to our channel, share with your friends, all that good jazz. Thank you very much, and we will see you in the next one.